Dear student, I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Biochemistry. So, in this lecture, I will be going over introduction to heme proteins and then myoglobin structure and function. Let us get into the details. Now, the heme proteins, they contain a heme as the prosthetic group and note that heme is a iron containing molecule. It is an organic molecule that contains iron and that is in turn attached to a protein molecule. So, those are referred as heme proteins. Now, example for heme proteins, we have a hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, it is a tetrameric metalloprotein. Whereas, uh, another example for heme protein is a myoglobin. Myoglobin is a monomeric metalloprotein. And then cytochrome P450s are also heme containing proteins where heme is attached to a protein molecule as a prosthetic group. And cytochromes present in the electron transport chain are also heme containing proteins. Now, the whether it is a hemoglobin or a myoglobin, so each monomer that is present in a heme protein like hemoglobin and myoglobin, so it has got a heme attached as a prosthetic group. Now, if you look at heme, heme is a complex protoporphyrin 9 where ferrous siren is attached in the center of a heme, especially in the hemoglobin and myoglobin. So, that is what is shown here. It is a protoporphyrin ring here, protoporphyrin 9 ring and where in the center, so the heme molecule which is attached and that is make a coordinated bond with the protoporphyrin ring. So, basically four nitrogens present in the protoporphyrin ring make a interaction here with the heme. So, how that exactly happens? It is the ferrous siren which has got six valency. So, four valency will be attached with the nitrogens, four nitrogens in the protoporphyrin 9 and the fifth valency will bind with the histidine, one of the protein uh, that is part of a polypeptide chain in the hemoglobin and myoglobin and the sixth valency will bind with oxygen in an oxygenated molecule. So, here is uh, the explanation there. So, the ferrous siren which is fixed in the center of protoporphyrin ring. Now, the ferrous siren can be attached to six ligands, four pyrrole nitrogen atoms uh, which are present in the porphyrin ring system which will attach with uh, four valency of the ferrous iron. Now, the fifth valency is going to bind with imidazole nitrogen of a proximal histidine which is part of a globin part of hem uh, hemoglobin and myoglobin and the sixth valency will bind with oxygen molecule that is what is shown here. A molecule of oxygen is binding to sixth valency of iron whereas the fifth valency is binding with the histidine that is histidine is part of a globin molecules. That is how hemoglobin and myoglobin are attached to the heme and that heme with the ferrous siren attached to oxygen molecule. So, in a deoxyhemoglobin, the iron is coordinated with only 5 ligands since the oxygen is not present because Fe3 plus that is a ferric form of iron has got only 5 valency that means so 4 valency satisfied with the 4 nitrogens which are attached to the porphyrin ring. Fifth valency will bind with the histidine. There is no sixth valency to bind with oxygen. That is why deoxyhemoglobin molecule do not carry oxygen. Now, coming to myoglobin. Note that myoglobin is a heme containing protein present in the heart and uh, skeletal muscle, especially the red muscle fibers. So, it is a single polypeptide chain having a one subunit. Basically, it is a one tertiary structure there and it has got one heme groups with the ferrous siren in the center and that ferrous siren it imparts a deep brown color to myoglobin molecule. So, note that around 75 percent of the polypeptide chains present in uh, myoglobin it is containing alpha helical conformations. So, out of tot eight al uh, total 8 alpha helical chains are there in a uh, myoglobin molecule. So, that contributes to 75 percent of the polypeptide chains uh, in a myoglobin it is of alpha helical chain. Now, how exactly myoglobin is uh, attached to a polypeptide chain and so especially the heme present in myoglobin, how it is attached to a globin part of myoglobin and how it is going to bind with the oxygen. So, the concept here is see the heme which is which has got ferrous siren in the center 
and that ferrous iron has got six valencies so four will bind with uh, four nitrogen atoms of the porphyrin ring so uh, the fifth valency that is bound with histidine is the proximal histidine so proximal histidine it is going to bind with that uh, globin part of uh, hemoglobin and the fifth valency sorry sixth valency sixth valency will bind with oxygen and the distal histidine that is histidine e7 is going to stabilize that particular oxygen molecule so histidine e7 and histidine f8 these are the histidine molecules which are present in the interior of a myoglobin molecule so histidine f8 is directly interacting with the ferrous iron there and it's going to function in uh, binding of oxygen molecule uh, to the fer where ferrous iron is attached to the heme and that's how the heme is attached to the globin part of a uh, myoglobin whereas uh, the sixth valence which is binding with oxygen so the distal histidine is going to stabilize that oxygen binding by maintaining the favored angulation there so that's what is shown here in the figure so we have proximal histidine which is attached to the ferrous siren and then sixth valence bound with oxygen so and the distal histidine which is kind of stabilizing this oxygen binding by binding the bonding angle as 121 degrees so one oxygen and then it is bent like this second oxygen atom so that is uh, basically 121 degree angulation that's because of the distal histidine which is present uh, so that is kind of hindering the straight line binding of oxygen second oxygen atom so that's a favorable angulation there for oxygen binding so binding of oxygen to the heme of myoglobin brings a conformational change in the globin chain and one myoglobin will bind with one oxygen molecule only so remember that so what is the binding of oxygen to myoglobin so myoglobin with its tertiary structure will bind with oxygen with higher affinity because it has got a tertiary structure myoglobin having a tertiary structure it can bind only with one oxygen at higher affinity and how do you understand higher affinity so if you uh, look at the oxygen dissociation curve here so the 50 percent of oxygen when it is bound to a myoglobin so it will uh, drop to around 2.8 millimeter of mercury which will indicate p50 so p50 is it is the partial pressure of oxygen at which oxygen bound to half of the myoglobin binding site like if there are 100 myoglobin when 50 percent of the myoglobin is oxygenated that is what is called as p50 which is uh, 2.8 millimeter of mercury so lower the p50 so higher the affinity for a, a heme molecule for oxygen so a p50 20 millimeter of mercury 95 percent of myoglobins are already saturated so the oxygen dissociation curve for myoglobin as you can see here it is the hyperbola as you see so oxygen dissociation curve for myoglobin is hyperbola always remember see hyperbolic curves they indicates increased oxygen affinity for myoglobin molecule so that means they don't release oxygen easily so they will have higher affinity for oxygen so the, that's why myoglobin is suitable for as a storage form of oxygen rather than a transporter of oxygen so this is a simple facts about a myoglobin so myoglobin overall it has a tertiary structure it has only one heme group and that means it has one ferrous iron and that ferrous iron attached with one molecule of oxygen so every myoglobin molecule attached with one molecule of oxygen and the p50 for myoglobin for oxygen it is low it is 2.8 millimeter of mercury that means myoglobin has got higher affinity for oxygen that means it is uh, able to store oxygen uh, rather than it is acting as a transporter of oxygen so it's going to store oxygen until the demand for that oxygen comes when the partial pressure of ox uh, tissue drops to 20 millimeter of mercury and less than that at that time myoglobin bound oxygen start to release for use by the skeletal muscle so this is all about uh, introduction to the heme proteins and also myoglobin structure and myoglobin function thank you